hear me out. AI isn't going anywhere, and I know some of you are stressing about whether or not it's going to replace your, your current jobs. Personally, I do love using AI, but let's be real. It is still a long way from stealing our jobs, and where it does shine is as a sidekick, helping you brainstorm, troubleshoot, or even hack smarter. In this video, we're gonna see what that looks like inside of Burp AI. Yep, Portswigger has been cooking up some new AI features, and I want to put that to test. Quick heads up though, this is a sponsored video by Portswigger, but I'm still gonna give it to you straight and see what this thing can really do. So let's fire it up. I'll walk you through what that looks like in action, how it plugs into your normal workflows, and then we're going to see if it can actually help me find a real vulnerability and also exploit it. So what I wanna test out here is instead of just having it scan a whole application and just showing us vulnerabilities and validating it using Burp AI, I'm gonna actually try and look for vulnerabilities that require context. For example, right here, this is from the Ghost API hub on Hacking Up. This is completely free. You can just go and launch it and play along. But what you can see here is that we have this API that we have found and it takes a username of some sort. It's not an integer, so it's not like we can just load it up into the application and give it a couple of numbers and we'll find it. It is going to require a username in a specific format and then in a different language, it is going to give us some information that requires us to check and see if it is PII. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna go to Burp, we're gonna go to our target, go to scope and set our scope to ctfio.com include subdomains because we're going to need it. There's going to be a bunch of subdomains of this that we're going to test on. And then I'm going to exclude all the other out of scope stuff. Make sure I go to my sitemap, remove all of these really quickly. And now that we have everything set up, I'm going to just refresh this entire page, intercept it, and then send it to my repeater. And here we can play around with Burp AI and see if it can actually exploit this. I'm going to give it a really simple prompt, nothing too complicated. I'm going to say, hey, is this path vulnerable to an IDOR? Can you craft usernames similar to the one given to you and find one exploitable user where it leaks PII? Confirm if it is, it is indeed PII and tell me what it leaks. So what I'm doing here is I'm asking it, can you come up with usernames? And can you confirm that username shows you PII? And if it does, because it is not in English, can you tell me what they mean? Even though it's obvious when we look at it, I want to kind of confirm and see how far this thing can go. I'm going to push this really quickly. It is going to start a task for us. And now it's going to just start creating that prompt and going through our request. So it looks like right now it's getting a baseline. It says, I need to understand the baseline request that returns for the given username jrodriguez75. This will help me understand the expected response format and what type of user information is being exposed. So it's sending that request and it's analyzing it really quickly. And now it looks like you got the baseline and it's saying that it is leaking the full name, email, age, their phone number, their address, their national ID, and the city that is in their profile. Great, it is giving us really, really good information right now. Now it is going to test this for an IDOR by creating usernames. So right now it's just simply creating J Rodriguez usernames with different numbers. Then it's switching over to different letters in the beginning. So it's going H Rodriguez, K Rodriguez, it's going through them. It's not finding anything. It is now doing some weird usernames so far, but let's just skip those. We don't have anything in there. It's really good that it's trying J Martinez. It's now switching over to different last names that sound about the same. It is also Southern American last names. If you looked at my previous video, but I made it on this, I actually mentioned how to use ChatGPT to come up with common last names that are very popular in South America, testing it and seeing if it works, which is kudos to them for doing this. But it looks like it hasn't found anything valid just yet. So we're hoping that it's gonna find one that is valid. But this is really, really interesting because it understood the username. It has a first name, initial, last name, and some numbers, but it hasn't found one. It looks like on the third attempt, the very first one is Jay Rodriguez without a number. That is another valid username, and it's leaking PII, and now it is actually saying success. Found the second valid user, Jay Rodriguez. That returned a 200 status code, and it does have the age 40, which is not the same one as last time, which is great because it's comparing it and saying, hey, look, I confirmed that these two Jay Rodriguez are not the same. One is age 50, and the other one is age 44, and then now it's just going to make the next steps which is great because we we're able to see how does it do this with context the thing that i want to highlight in this video is that scanners are doing the scans for us right it's easy to find a scanner that looks for an sql injection and then analyzes the request and then the ai just spits out text and it says oh i'm using ai to export their sql injection that's not what i want to look those are just regular traditional scanners what i care about here is context so when it comes down to looking at the context and looking at the path and everything else kudos to burp ai it did this pretty really good and now we have some really good data 
data right now. If you can look, it's continuing to scan. It's going to just try and find another one. And it looks like it found another one with C. Rodriguez. That is another username that's valid. So I'm just going to pause it before it goes further. Kudos to them. I'm going to stop it right here. But what I want to check out next is, could it actually create proof of concept for us? So if I have a vulnerability or if I have a file uploader, for example, and I tell it, hey, test for these different vulnerability types, is it able to look for them in a creative working POC and give it to me in that context that I'm looking at? So let's try on the next lab really quickly. So to do this, we're going to quickly jump into one of the labs that I have for my course. We're going to go to the test value, like a like and subscribe and make sure that our proxy is working. I'm going to turn it on, send this request, uh, send go. It's going to send it to our repeater really quickly and we're going to turn this off go to repeater and we're going to give it another prompt here that says can you exploit nxxc here and extract the contents of file etc password and the reason why this is interesting is i'm actually sending this to it starts a task the reason why this is so interesting is because if you take a look here we're looking at an api.php if you look at the content type right here it is an application json and that's something that a lot of bug bounty hunters don't test for and it is kind of a pain to deal with this you have to change the content type and then you have to figure out what this query looks like in xml so i want to see if it quickly can identify that switch and then figure out how the search works and then write the export for it so it looks like it is looking at back in analysis it says that xml input is accepted uh right here and then it says that it's going to now try and figure out what it looks like. So if I send this to repeater, it is doing a test search right here, very similar to what we had with the JSON format, but in XML, it is getting a valid search right here. It's saying, hey, nothing found for test. And then it's going back down here and it is creating a proof of concept for XXC and it's extracting our ETC password. So this is a really good way to just cut down all the work of figuring things out one by one. You can just let this run in the background and just do its thing. And then when it comes back, you can look at all the different responses and all the different logic that it has gone through and then draw your own conclusions based on this. So, so far what I've done is I've taken a request send it to repeater and then i've told it to look for specific vulnerabilities i have been given instructions on how to do that but what i want to try out next is see how this looks like when it comes down to scanning an application and whether or not it's able to identify a vulnerability explain it and also export it for us so to do this we're going to use gin and juice and just to show you what it looks like if you go into here i'm going to just quickly disable this so we can see it it shows you all the different vulnerabilities that exist this is created to make sure your scanners work properly it tells you the uh, path and what vulnerability exists within it what we're going to do quickly is go to burp suite and we're going to launch a new scan we're going to do a crawl and audit and you can see that there is an ai enhancement for uh, broken access control false positive reductions if you want to see a video on this drop me a comment saying bac i'll make that in upcoming weeks we're going to go next and just set our scope here for scanning to this website using https and https only we're going to go to next and we're going to do a fast scan which will just be a little bit faster and not as deep as we wanted to for the sake of this video and we're just going to click scan and let it do its thing it's going to quickly find a couple of volts for us hopefully it's sending a bunch of requests you can see that we're sending 37 requests per second and we've already sent 400 or 300 requests already and uh, it's just going to quickly scan all of this for different vulnerabilities and you can kind of set the bottom right here what's going on it's doing sql injection xss uh, it looks like it found the url override of some sort that we can just click on explore issue this isn't something that i really care for it's informational for the severity we want to find something even better so i'm going to let this quickly scan and come back as soon as it's done it looks like that it did find an sql injection while it does its scan i want to kind of see if we can explore this really quickly so i'm going to press explore issue i don't expect anything fancy here because it is an sql injection it's already identified it but i do want to see how it's going to explain this because if you're like me and you're on a pen test or on a bug bounty program a lot of times you have to explain these vulnerabilities to the people on the other side and something like this is very very good to have because you can just copy the explanation paste it into your report and it's just easier than having to write it down one by one so we're going to let it do its thing it looks like it's doing some process here what it does i'm going to quickly go back to my scan right here and it looks like it has found a couple more things it's found a cross-site scripting dom based right here it has found a open redirect it has found some uh, other ones some like template injections right here and also an http response header injection it's going to continue to scan this i'm curious to see what else it's finding and we're going to go back to this explore issue right here it is going to test a basic union select injection so it's just uh doing a, an apostrophe union select it is going to url encode it now so it actually works and it's going to probably look at this result of this i'm assuming the next one is it's going to try and see how many columns there are Yep, there it is. It is doing a column count for the union injection. It's going to just do a bunch of nulls, it looks like. It's done 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a bunch of nulls, and let's see what it does. It looks like it did find eight columns using null, so it's like doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just to confirm it. That is a working proof of concept. If I send it to repeater, we can do a select. Uh, if I remove one of these, then we're probably gonna have a error as expected. So it is exploiting this properly. And now it is doing, it's still thinking. So we're gonna leave it at that and see what it's gonna come up with. And now it is testing to see which of these columns are visible in the output. That is great. So it's gonna just do probably numbers and a bunch of test values. Uh, all of them will come back as 500, except for these ones right here. So let's see what it does next. Let me actually just quickly send this to repeater again and kind of see what it looks like. Uh, maybe we can get a preview of this. A render. Oh, we're still getting an uh, internal error. I think I may have misclicked on this one. So it is working here. This should have worked without giving us any issues and it looks like, oh it is a 500 right here let's see it is testing a single column visibility with 999 and it looks like our scanner is still going and it's found some xss and other xss here we'll come back to those probably at the end of the video let's see what this does here now it's looking to see the second column with the 999 oh actually this one was a test single column visibility with 999 this is a test string injection in second column so now it's putting injected here and now it's doing a test column visibility mapping the second column accept strings data injected work without an error perfect so if i send this to our repeater and do a send and look at the render it looks like we got some results back but i don't see injected anywhere maybe if we look at the raw and look for injected let's see where it shows it doesn't seem like it's showing up uh actually it is let's see injected uh, it's reflecting, it's still reflecting here, so I don't see it yet, but let's just see what it comes up, but I'm just going to trust that it's going to do something here. It looks like now it is getting the database information via the visible column, so this would be the test to see if it's actually exploitable, and it says that the payload was coming back with a 500. This suggests that not all columns accept function results, so it is doing some stuff. It is, uh, I think in some cases it is going to find something for us. I wonder if it would be faster just to send this to the repeater with just the null values right here when we have the eight columns and having it extract. So I'm going to actually do this just to see what we can do. I'm going to do burp AI. There is an SQL injection here. Remind me the database name. I wonder if we can actually do that in this lab. So I'm just going to send it. We have the task created, but let's see what this one is doing. Oh, it looks like I already did it. There we go. And it might database table so it looks like it did get the database name i don't have to even worry about that one it says major success the user function is coming back as peter in the product name so it's just fully launching a uh, entire sql injection so now it's just getting all the database tables it's gone the data table names now it's going through intruder i'm going to pause it right here it's a lot of requests to be sent so it looks like it's actually doing a really good job of just not only identifying the vulnerability but taking all the right steps one how many columns are there then getting the database name from the database name getting the table names and then from the table name just building up on all of those and just getting all the data that we need and it's just getting the second table name and just so on really really cool stuff and it doesn't have to be manually done now. I feel like this is really cool to do. I also want to see how it does with an XSS. Many of you probably know this already. I love looking for XSS. So I kind of want to know what it does here. So I'm going to explore this issue as well. And then it looks like it is just coming back and saying, hey, uh, let's explore the homepage to understand the application context. So it looks like it's not just jumping into the thing that we're doing right here. It was saying just there's an XSS and login, but it's not testing it out immediately it's doing some a little bit of like a context for this now it's going to the account login page to see what the function looks like okay it looks like it's looking at the my account test legitimate login to understand the post login functionality so i guess it's just sending a request to the login page right now it is making a post request i'm going to send it to repeater yep it is sending a username uh, now it's going to exploit the xss to steal a session cookie so it looks like maybe it has already identified the xss so it looks like if we click expand, we don't have to send it to repeater. You can just send it to repeater when you're ready. So now it's just doing a little bit of document location to see if it could do all this. I think it's going to get a little too fancy. I want to just see a working POC, but it's just fully now going into exploiting this. I haven't seen a working XSS payload here. Let's see. Uh, this is just the legitimate. This is Carlos. Maybe it identified it already. Uh, what does this one look like? Let's just send this and see what it looks like really quick. Invalid CSRF token. So it's still going. Let's see. 
So what I'm noticing here is that not only they are looking at exploiting vulnerabilities, they're also looking at escalating them because there's a difference between finding a vulnerability in the theory it's there, but actually being able to show the impact and looking at it right now uh, on the XSS one, it looks like it kind of skipped over getting a working POC like an alert one and it straight just dove into looking at XSS payloads. Honestly, I did try this out with a couple of other XSS stuff. I think XSS is one that's has a lot of logic when it's more complicated, so it kind of struggles with it, but it is honestly uh, a good way of doing it. Actually, now it says execute XSS with correct session cookie. So let's expand it. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a while before it figures this out. But yeah, I have tried this out a bunch of times. It did a really good job when I was just curious about how Burp AI works before I made the video. With some filter systems, it did a really, really great job. In some other ones, it wasn't able to figure it out. And that's because there's a lot of logic that comes into play when it comes down to XSS. It goes back to my earlier point of AI not fully being there to take our jobs because we still need to have people like us that are going to validate these, escalate them, or maybe just guide these AIs or these agents to be able to do their work for us. So it looks like this is still uh, going to, uh, looking at the screen, it looks like it's still going to be working with it. Uh, it is now finally trying to just get an alert one. I'm going to leave it at that. I think this was a really good preview to kind of understand how Burp AI works to see where the future of pen testing and automated testing is going, especially leveraging AI. Really, really cool stuff. I've enjoyed playing with this a lot, but now I'm also curious to see what do you guys think? Are you going to try Burp AI? If you are, do me a favor. There's a link down below in the description. Click on it. Go explore it. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of all this AI stuff. Are you scared that AI is going to take your jobs? Let me know in the comments down below. And do me a favor, if you haven't already, we're almost at 200,000 subscribers. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, become a Nahomi. I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.